Manka Dingra, the Democratic candidate for Washington State Senate, canvassed in Duval. Ruth Fremsenth, New York Times, Samamish Wash, it is the stuff of liberal fantasies a vast, defiant territory, sweeping along the country's Pacific coastline, governed by Democrats and resisting President Trump at every turn. A single election in a wealthy Seattle suburb on Tuesday could make that scenario a reality, handing the party control of government in Washington state, and extinguishing Republicans' last fragile claim on power on the West Coast. The region has been a rare Democratic stronghold on an electoral map now dominated by vast swaths of red, and Republicans' only toehold on power there has been a one-seat majority in the Washington state Senate. The prospect of such far-reaching autonomy for Democrats, who already hold the governor's offices and both houses of the legislatures in Oregon and California, has infused extraordinary energy into what might have been a low-key special election. The race is on track to draw more than $9 million in campaign spending, a record-breaking sum for Washington state. National environmental and abortion rights groups have mobilized, business associations and oil companies have poured in money, and a former vice president, Joseph R. Biden Jr., has intervened on the Democratic side. Sharon Nelson, the Democratic leader in the Washington state Senate, conveyed the party's grand aspirations in an almost Trump-like phrase a blue wall, Ms. Nelson enthused from the Canadian border to the Mexican border. Leading in the polls and anticipating victory, Democrats have sketched an aggressive agenda on issues where strong consensus appears to exist in the party, including new laws on gun control, contraception and environmental regulation. Ms. Nelson said she had met with the Speaker of the Oregon State House about enacting policy across state lines. The three states' Democratic governors have spoken regularly about policy collaboration, and over the summer began coordinated talks on climate change with foreign heads of state. Most ambitious of all, Gov. J. Inslee, a Democrat, harbors dreams of enacting a muscular carbon pricing scheme along with California, Oregon and officials in Canada. In an interview, Mr. Inslee said the special election in Eastside Seattle could open the way for broad action, including taxing carbon but also joint initiatives on energy efficiency, research and clean water. We intend to make a scale effort in the next session of the legislature if we win, he said. It will be a bell in the night, showing hope for the country, rejecting the Trump agenda of denying climate science, a coastal alliance, Mr. Inslee added, especially at a time when cities such as Seattle and Portland, Oregon, and throughout California are booming economically, would help make the case to a national aunt that addressing climate change through energy policy is good for business and job creation, the more we can have uniformity in a carbon pricing system, a regulatory system, the better, he said. Gov. J. Inslee at the Capitol in Olympia, Wash, in February. Ted S. Warren Associated Press Both parties see Democrats as favored to win the district, which voted heavily for Hillary Clinton in 2016. Republicans held the area state Senate seat largely because of the personal popularity of an incumbent lawmaker, Andy Hill, who did of lung cancer last fall. Despite their dominance at the federal level and in most state capitals, West Coast Republicans have been driven to the point of extinction as the party's standing has plummeted in prosperous cities and suburbs, from San Diego to Seattle. They candidate in the state Senate race, Jill Young Lee England, a polished former political operative, has strained to set herself apart from the National Party, declaring that she did not vote for Mr. Trump in 2016 and pleading with voters to embrace divided government in Olympia. Ms. England, 33, has campaigned explicitly against the Blue Wall scenario, warning that voters should not let Washington go the way of California and other one-party states. She expressed deep skepticism of Mr. Inslee's climate proposals and suggested Democrats were mainly focused on trying to raise general revenue by another name. Republican groups have aired commercials saying that Seattle liberals could wreak havoc on the state's finances if Democrats are allowed to govern unchecked. You don't want to go the way of Oregon, Ms. England said in an interview. Washingtonians are more independent, Ms. England rebuked Democrats for what she characterized as using the state government as a partisan bludgeon. I think that's wrong, she said.
The role of a state senator is not to go and lambast what's happening nationally, but the 45th District, a diverse suburban patchwork that stretches across the high-tech haven of Redmond and into more rural territory beyond, north and east of Bellevue, is emblematic of the territory that has lurched away from the Republican Party over the last year, recoiling from Mr. Trump's brand of hard nationalism. Manka Dingra, the Democratic candidate, has led in the polls by a comfortable but not overwhelming margin. Nuz Dingra, 43, a gregarious career prosecutor, has pledged support for an array of Democratic wish list policies, though in a nod to the district's moderate history, her campaign literature promises independent leadership. She has endorsed a carbon tax and applauded the state's insistent litigation against the White House. Musdingra said in an interview that state government should take comprehensive action to check what is coming out of Washington, D.C. Frankly, I think all states are going to have to do that, Musdingra said. We have to make sure immigrants feel safe. We have to make sure women's health care is protected. Republican leaders in the state concede the national backdrop has made a tough race even harder. Rob McKenna, a former state attorney general who ran unsuccessfully against Mr. Inslee in 2012, said he believes an upset is possible, but called the Trump factor a drag on Ms. England. Mr. McKenna cautioned that even a Democratic victory should not be overinterpreted as a political turning point. A setback for Republicans, he said, would not change the fundamental character of the state, which he described as more politically competitive and fiscally conservative than its coastal neighbors. Ji Young Lee England, the Republican candidate, went door to door in Woodenville. Ruth Fremsenth, New York Times This is a state that is still, more or less, 5,050, Mr. McKenna said, predicting of Democrats they'll have difficulties because they'll be reluctant to risk their majorities in the House and the Senate. Other local leaders are less sure. Holding up the Seattle area is an illustrative example of an upwardly mobile metropolitan area shifting to the left. If Republicans have staked their message, in large part, on suburban distrust of the big city, the region is increasingly knit together by a thriving tech economy at companies like Amazon and Microsoft, and an expanding rapid transit rail network that is tying people closer to Seattle. Dow Constantine, the King County executive and a Democrat, said that the once very real political divisions of the region, Democratic-leaning Seattle on the west side of Lake Washington, Republican-leaning enclaves to the east, have been shattered by demographic change, too, especially as the immigrants who came to work in tech jobs encouraged others in the countries they left to follow them. The comical attempts to demonize Seattle in the 45th district race, I think, will be shown to have been a poor strategy, Mr. Constantine said. The area's shifting identity has been on vivid display in this election as Ms. Dingra went door to door on Wednesday in Duval, a growing outer suburb built across rolling farmlands. Some voters are eager to repudiate Republicans. Patty Andrews, a retired special education teacher, described Ms. Dingra's campaign as a corrective to Mr. Trump's election. With a Democratic takeover in Washington state, she said, I would stand up taller. Even some Republican-leaning voters who back Ms. England say they are uneasy about Mr. Trump. She seems sensible and level-headed, Ed Whitehead, the retired owner of a printing company, said of Ms. England after she stopped at his door in Sammamish. Mr. Whitehead, who said he voted for Mr. Trump, said these days he is not so sure about the president. Still, amid their exuberance, Democrats concede it could take time to assemble substantial policy achievements. Should they win, Democrats would be governing with the slimmest possible majority and with just one short legislative session before the next election in 2018. Unlike Democrats in other parts of the nation, they are divided. In 2013, two Democratic state senators crossed the aisle to caucus with the Republicans, creating a coalition majority, and wounds still linger from the 2016 presidential election, when Senator Bernie Sanders won in the Democratic caucuses but then lost to Hillary Clinton in the primary election. Ms. Dingra suggested that the session might become mainly a chance for Democrats to prove themselves responsible, rather than as a lunge toward California-like status. The Democratic caucus, she noted, is not homogeneous. You have rural area Democrats who have different priorities, Mr. 
Inslee, too, said Democrats should temper their expectations, even as he made plain his excitement about governing with a freer hand. There's diversity of views in all caucuses and so nothing's guaranteed in life, Mr. Inslee said. But what this does is, it takes the sleth off the doors.